This is a PR, and as you can see, it's nicely documented with a couple different changes that it has in the description, and you can see in the files that it changed, we are updating our Mintlify documentation, and you're like, wow. And as we all know, good documentation is the key to any developer tool, but the problem is I absolutely hate writing documentation, and I hate keeping up to date with documentation. So I use SpinAI, the thing that I'm literally building documentation about, to create a bot that every single time I make a PR like this one, it will go through the PR, go through all my documentation, see what is missing from those changes, and it will automatically create a new PR with complete documentation updates for whatever I might be missing. And it'll make sure it does it in the same style as your original doc, so people aren't like, oh my god, why does this feel like, you know, it's written by someone else? Nope. This is the same format that the rest of our documentation that is related to this is in, and I'm going to show you how to set this up today. So if you're like me and you want to be able to use this, this is pretty much all you have to do. It's all open source. I pushed it up today. You first run MPX create spin AI. If you're familiar with create react app, I just made a little thing that helps you, you know, create and use templates a lot faster than having to clone it. We're going to call this like doc updater. Uh, and you can see here, there's a couple of cool things I've put together, but uh, the one we're going to be using today is the Mintlify Docs Updater. So you can go ahead and click enter, and that'll take maybe a minute or two to clone everything. Uh, we can now go into the Doc Updater. Now, inside Doc Updater is just going to be our basic uh, code here. So if you're not familiar with how a SpinAI app works, it's pretty basic. Essentially in the index, you pretty much just create an agent and you pass in the LLM you want to use. So in my case, I'm just using GPT-4 Turbo. Uh, and you also pass in the instructions. So like this is like, you know, telling it what you want to do. So you're a documentation maintenance agent, like you should do this, that, that, blah, blah, blah. So you give it some instruction. Then all you have to do is pass in the actions that you have coded that you want it to take. So in our case, we have a couple of different actions going on here. First, we analyze the code changes from the PR that the user submits. Then we analyze the structure of your documentation. Then we plan which files we want to update or create based on the actual code changes that were done. Then we generate the new document data. We update the navigation. This is specifically for Mintlify documentation because they have a mint.json where you sort of documentation like what you want on the sidebar bar and the actual structure of the documentation. And then after that, we create the PR. And pretty much all you have to do is create every single individual module here. So for example, the code that creates it using like a spin AI action and the agent will be able to discern and pass in the parameters that it needs to, to run all of this just based on your PR. So the whole point is we're leveraging AI, an orchestrator under the hood, if you will, this agent that has access to all these different actions and it gets to choose based on your PR, which ones to run, how to run them, what to pass into them based on your PR. And you don't have to handle any of that stuff. The AI will do all that for you. So. The first thing we're going to want to do is set up our environment variables. For here, since I'm using OpenAI under the hood uh, to run all this, you just input your OpenAI API key, which you get from their dashboard. Next, you're going to want to go ahead and implement your GitHub token. Now, if you're using this in a production environment, you probably want to do something like make a GitHub app or something to run this. Quickly show you how to make an access token. So essentially what you're going to want to do is you're going to go to settings uh, for your profile, then developer settings. And then over here, you're just going to want to generate a new token. And this will allow the bot to act on your behalf. So if we go back to the documentation, this token makes it so that like all this file, all this stuff that got pushed, it looks like it got pushed by me because I'm it's using my access token. But like I said, if you hook it up with like an actual GitHub app and like name the bot like our organization's document updated or, or something and use that instead. And finally, if you want to store the logs of where how your bot has been running so you could debug and stuff like that, you can use your spin API key. As you can see here, I can go to the spin dashboard and you can see a list of all the times that you've run uh, the agent and stuff like that and you can narrow down into every single run and see every action every llm call how much it costed and stuff like that so it only costed around like a four like a, a small fraction of a cent for example with uh, gpt's pricing if you want to be able to plan all that all you have to do is go make an account on app.spinai go to credentials make an organization and uh, pass those in and then on the code side as you can see here you can just go ahead and pass it in with the agent ID. And once the API key and the agent ID are there, the logs will start uh, being saved for every single run. Now, the next thing we have to do, and by the way, all of this is in the README. So if you need to follow along or need to refer back, you can find all of this in the README. 
Uh, the next thing we're going to do is go ahead and modify the config. This is what tells the bot where your docs actually live and sort of what to look for. So in this case, I'm using Turbo with Mintlify in my Mono repo, which means that the actual path to the documentation lives within the repo that the PR was created for. So as you can see here, this is what the actual like spin AI uh, repo looks like. It's just a Turbo Mono repo. And you can see if you go into uh, apps over here, we have the docs folder, so you can find it there. But in the case that you have your documentation uh, from Mintlify hosted in a separate repo, you can go ahead and like uh, add this docs owner repo and the repo name. So this from in my case would be like a to the Y, that's my GitHub username. And then like, you know, my like docs or something. And then uh, whatever like docs path. And lastly, we just have to go into GitHub and actually get it to update so that it sends us a webhook event whenever a pull request is made. So to do that, you just go over to settings in your GitHub repo. Then from there, you just click webhooks. And you can see here, I already have one from like a test event and stuff like that, but you can go ahead and add a webhook. And the key thing here, once you add the URL, so first of all, the URL is going to be different. So in my case, since we're gonna test this locally, I have uh, ngrok up and running. So I'm just gonna paste in this ngrok URL, but we're gonna replace that with railway once we actually deploy this and then you're just going to change the content type to application json and then we're going to specify the specific event we want pretty much we only want a pull request here uh, in the events and then we're just going to add that webhook and you'll see this has now been created and whenever we raise a pr it is going to go ahead and hit our ngrok url which is in turn going to run our spin ai bot so let's go ahead and test that you can see here i have ngrok up and running and then over here i'm just going to do npm run dev uh, which should start the server up on our local host, which connects to ngrok. Like I said, you can skip all this local testing if you just host it somewhere. And finally, I'm gonna create a new pull request here. So it's kind of annoying for this one. I'm in my actual repo and we already have an open pull request. I'm just gonna go ahead and quickly close that and remake it. So now the pull request has been made and you can see here, we got the webhook and it's gonna start the interaction. I'll fast forward this part. All right, so it looks like it took around three minutes after the original PR was opened uh, to create this one so we go into it um it tagged it as like documentation you can change like if you don't like the titles it makes and stuff like that but uh there you go so it tagged it it talked about what it did and it changed the file as you can see it also changed the mint.json and let's go ahead and run this locally now and as you can see it pretty much made the updated documentation in a similar style to our existing stuff there's some stuff here and there that it misses that i'd like to get it to do more of like for example uh, sometimes it adds the new pages to the llm support thing and sometimes it doesn't that's something that i'm sure with a bit of prompt engineering you could probably modify the agent's prompt just to make that a bit more consistent uh, if that's behavior that you're looking for so of course you can play around with it it's built off spin open source framework so you can modify this make it for stuff other than mintlify the last time i made a pr bot some guy actually made it for bitbucket as well instead of just github which i thought was really cool so if you guys want to modify or add anything to it feel free to make a pr for it and i'll check it out now let's move on to deploying it it should be super easy because we're using railway so first you're going to want to make sure your code is pushed up to git because that's what we're going to connect a railway with so we're going to click here deploy from a github repo uh and we're going to just choose the one that we have here um, and yeah, I this is like the second time I've used Railway. I used to use Heroku a lot, but this is so much better than Heroku. Now there's gonna be an environments uh, thing over here, like a variable thing over here. So this is for our environment variables. We're just gonna go ahead and add all of that in there. After clicking generate URL, it'll give you a URL that we can then go and replace in our actual uh, webhook thing. So if you remember, we're just gonna put our webhook there, slash webhook and make sure that it only sends the actual pull request. So now to test that it's working, I'm gonna close these PRs that uh, the Autodoc made. I'm gonna try and make it again. This time it should be hitting the production railway app instead of our local ngrok one. And the PR was just created. We can see in railway, it is running the same way that it was running locally. So we're gonna give it a couple minutes to fully finish. All right, and it looks like it finally worked. So that took around three, four minutes again uh, and railway pretty much completed successfully. And this time it looks like it actually did go ahead and create uh, changes in the overview where it added it. So yeah, you know how LLMs are. You gotta make sure AI does your bidding and does exactly what you're looking for. But now thanks to this, whenever a new PR is created, I can just have auto docs updated. And of course I'm sure I'm gonna have to edit some things here and there, but it's so much more convenient than having to do it. And that PR will stay open so I don't forget to actually update the docs for anything I made. And of course all the actual actions and stuff like that, if you connect your SpinAI account, 
out, you can go ahead and debug to see if you want to modify any different actions and stuff like that, or if you don't like how the LLM is handling things. So everything you will need is in the description below. And don't forget, you can just run MPX create spin AI to get started with this. And yeah, feel free to make a PR or add an issue to the repo if you see anything's missing. And I'll catch you guys in the next one.